But when it came to the ships, like the X-Wing and the TIE Fighters, X-Wings have red lasers and TIE Fighters have green. Like, even the Death Star laser is green. Like, what gives? What colors are good and what colors are bad? Like, do the colors mean anything at all? Well, today, we are going to figure that out. <laughs> Lightsabers have got to be the coolest object in the entire Star Wars universe. Nay, any universe. No kid who has ever seen Star Wars has not like immediately wanted a lightsaber. In fact, no adult who has ever seen Star Wars has not immediately wanted a lightsaber. I keep putting it on my Christmas list. You guys keep not getting me one. Don't worry, it's okay. I'm actually pretty good at pretending to have one. <laughs> Fun fact, everyone thinks they're good at making lightsaber noises, but they're not. Except for me, I am really good. <laughs> Seriously though, a laser sword that can like cut through anything and deflect laser bolts back at stuff, like they are so awesome. And yet, there are quite a few mysteries about them. Which is not aided by the fact that the Star Wars universe is muddy with old information and new information. Canon info and non-canon info. So in case you didn't know, when Disney bought Star Wars back in 2012, they basically just wiped the slate clean. Like at that time, in addition to just the movies, there were tons of books and comics and video games and other media that all made up this giant expanded Star Wars universe. But Disney came in and basically just said, nope, none of that counts anymore. The only thing that counts as official Star Wars is the original six movies, episodes one through six, and Star Wars The Clone Wars, the animated series made by Cartoon Network, and anything created henceforth, which is great. Great if you are brand new to Star Wars and now no longer have 40 years of content to wade through. But if you grew up loving Star Wars and exploring some of the expanded universe, it can be tricky now to figure out what still counts and what doesn't. So like before 2012, I could say your lightsaber color was an extension of your personality. Blue lightsabers were associated with protection, consciousness, and intellect. You know, somehow I don't think I would have had a blue lightsaber. <laughs> Green meant you believed in peace and harmony. And red was red because the Sith used synthetic crystals. But none of that is true anymore, leaving me with the question, what do all of the colors mean? And in case you didn't know, there's actually way more than just three colors. There are in fact seven different colors lightsabers are known to be, including red, green, blue, yellow, purple, white, and black. As of yet, the new canon hasn't produced any sort of like personality-based reason for each individual color, but there actually is still some reason for every single color, some of which comes from the characters and the story itself, and some of which is actually just from a production standpoint. Let's start with blue and red, probably the most iconic two colors of lightsabers. In fact, after the first two movies, A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, they were the only two lightsaber colors to have been seen, and they weren't even decided before they made the movie. They were added in post-production because otherwise what they had filmed was just two guys fighting with white sticks. <laughs> See, it's not the same. Interestingly, both blades were originally going to be just white, and they were going to achieve the effect by putting spinning mirrors on the sticks themselves, which would create a glow around them when filmed through a lens. And I have to say, spinning mirrors somehow sounds more dangerous than just a regular lightsaber. In any case, this proved to be a very difficult thing to film. Duh. So the decision was made to add the glow in post, where they had to do it frame by frame, and when they decided that blue was going to represent the Jedi, and red Red was going to represent the Sith. Today though, the reason that all the bad guys carry red lightsabers does go a little bit deeper than that and has to do with the power source of the lightsabers themselves, the kyber crystals. Kyber crystals are also known as living crystals. They are very rare and attuned to the light side of the force specifically. The crystals concentrate energy in a very unique manner that actually verges on sentience. Honestly, they're kind of like wands in Harry Potter, like right down to the whole
whole the wand chooses the wizard part of it. Like, think about that scene where Rey is trying to pull the lightsaber out of the snow. At the same time, Kylo Ren is also trying to pull the saber out of the snow, and he's obviously way more experienced with the Force at that point, and yet it goes to Rey. The crystal chooses the Force user, Mr. Potter. I mean, seriously, what are Jedi if not just space wizards, am I right? That wizard's just a crazy old man. Anyway, the reason all of the bad guys have red lightsabers is because in order to get these light side attuned kyber crystals to work for them, they have to use the force to dominate the crystal and bend it to their will, which literally causes it to bleed, causing the red color. Kylo Ren appears to have taken this one step further as the crystal in his saber is full on cracked, which does make it more powerful, but also less stable, which is why it has that whole crazy serrated look and has the two extra exhaust port crossbar things. Which personally, I think looks really cool, but honestly, he is like asking to lose a wrist with that thing. Of course, by wrist, I mean hand. I mean, can, can you lose just a wrist? Now, once a kyber crystal has been corrupted in this way, there is almost no bringing it back to the light side. But there has been at least one successful example of someone repairing a crystal. This was done by Ahsoka Tano, Anakin's apprentice during the Clone Wars after she left the Jedi Order. This created the only known set of white lightsabers, which are freaking awesome. And even though there's no specified meaning, I like to think that given how they were created and Ahsoka's story, they represent redemption. The only color more rare than white is black, and there's only ever been a single black lightsaber ever made, fittingly known as the Darksaber. The Darksaber is pretty unique, as not only is it black, but rather than having a traditional rounded point like every other lightsaber, it has a sharp point like a more traditional sword. Sadly, not much is known about its origins other than that it was originally owned by the Jedi before it was stolen from them by the Mandalorians and then later stolen from them by none other than, wait for it, Darth Maul. Spoilers, he's alive! Which leaves us with just green, purple, and yellow. Green and purple, interestingly, have somewhat similar origins. Purple became a lightsaber color literally at the request of actor Samuel L. Jackson, who wanted his character, Mace Windu, to carry something that separated him from the rest of the Jedi. Apparently, he does this in a lot of movies, so if you ever see Samuel L. Jackson in something, try and look out for some sort of unique purple object he's carrying. Green as a lightsaber color, first day debuted in Return of the Jedi as Luke's second lightsaber. This was originally just going to be another blue lightsaber, but they decided to go with green because they thought it would contrast better with the blue sky on Tatooine. And while that might not have been intentional, I felt like it really worked well with Luke's story. Like, at the time, blue had been decidedly good and red decidedly bad, but green was sort of up in the air, just like Luke's character in Return of the Jedi. He was wearing all black, starting to be a little bit moody, and the fate of, like, I don't know, the entire galaxy came down to him deciding whether or not he was going to stay good or turn to the dark side. And that just leaves us with yellow. Man, I cannot tell you how bummed I would be if I'd like finished assembling my lightsaber and it came out yellow. Be like, you know what? Never, never mind. I don't want to be a Jedi. Um, the only known users of yellow lightsabers are the Jedi Temple Guards in Star Wars Clone Wars, who use double-bladed yellow lightsabers known as lightsaber pikes. What I find interesting about this is that even though the colors don't apparently mean anything, only the guards have yellow sabers, which kind of suggests that there's something about their personality or their disposition to be guards that led them to have a yellow saber. Remember, the crystal chooses the force user. But there you go. That is pretty much everything you need to know about lightsabers and why they are the colors that they are. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, if you could have a lightsaber, what color would you want it to be? Hint, not yellow. Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! Guys, yeah, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future Star Wars content. If you have not seen Rogue One yet, I highly recommend you check out this video, our top 10 things to look for in Rogue One, or if you want to dive back into the